Even if you can boost levels of this enzyme, you can significantly increase NAD levels without any external precursor or anything. You're just fixing your body's natural NAD production pathway. Welcome to the Seamland podcast. I'm your host, Seamland, and today our guest is Dr. Nicola Conlon. Nicola is a molecular biologist and NAD specialist. She's also the founder of Nuchido, which is a company that creates an NAD boosting supplement that works through the biggest bottleneck of NAD production, the NAD salvage pathway. As many of you know, NAD levels decline with age and low NAD levels are a major cause of aging. Activating the NAD salvage pathway is the most important thing you can do to increase NAD levels. Nuchido Time is a blend of compounds that directly work on the salvage pathway and it's been clinically shown to raise NAD levels. You can try out Time at Nuchido.com and use the code SIM10 SIIM10 for a 10% discount. Nicola, welcome back to the show. Hey Sam, thank you so much for having me back on. Yes, uh, it was. It's been a few years since the last time we had a podcast, and uh, you know the NAD world is still very popular, and uh, many people still talk about NAD and the different uh, NAD boosters, and there's still kind of the same misconceptions and like let's say uh, uh, misleading ways of thinking about NAD. So uh, yeah, I'm glad to have you back on the show and talk about some of these things but uh, you know you um, started researching NAD way before this trend <laughs> happened so like what got you into NAD in the first place we can start with that yeah so I've I've been talking about NAD for a long long time so for me it's really exciting that more people are talking about it but as you mentioned um it's complicated it's a complicated area of science so I think it's important that we you know as scientists discuss what the latest research is so I appreciate you inviting me on to chat about it but yeah so my background and the way I got into NAD is actually because I used to work in drug development um so I as part of my role in that company I was leading projects to develop drugs that were designed to slow cellular aging uh, which for a lot of people sounds totally crazy, but actually it's a huge area of interest within the drugs industry because aging is our biggest risk factor for pretty much every chronic disease that drugs companies are trying to target. So Alzheimer's, dementia, cardiovascular disease, cancer, um, your age is the biggest risk factor for all of them. So the idea is that if we can slow aging at the cellular level, even just a little bit, we may be able to slow the onset and progression of, of a lot of different age related diseases in one go. So um, that is the sort of world I came from. This is where I first learned about the, the value of NAD. Part of my role was to look at what cellular targets seem to be um, you know, implicated in aging and were the things that we could potentially um, you know, design drugs against. Now, the thing that I loved about NAD was it was actually something that you could manipulate quite easily within the cell and it didn't have to be drugs that were doing this. So um, it could be lifestyle interventions. It could be natural molecules from foods um, that definitely weren't drugs. So um, obviously drugs companies aren't interested in lifestyle interventions or any natural molecules that can't be patented, um, which was really frustrating because some of the molecules we were testing that were natural molecules worked way better than the drugs. Um, so I left that world in 2017 and I set up my own research company, Nishido Laboratories, which was how can we take all of this latest science in the field of aging research, but actually translate it into um, evidence based and clinically tested consumer products. And uh, yeah, that is how I first discovered NAD all of those years back. Mm, yeah, that's very interesting. And yeah, I think you're yeah very right that you know ph pharma companies and uh, drug companies want to obviously make a profit that's why they you know are companies in the first place kind of unless they're like government funded or something like that but you know they're still trying to get a profit and um you know <laughs> there's the you know there's the kind of common like conspiracy theory that they make drugs but the drugs never like make you completely healthy so that you're always forced to keep buying <laughs> the drugs uh, to like manage your sickness and never get fully healthy 
but you know, at the same time, like well, the best thing is uh, if people live longer, then uh, you have a, like a lifetime customer. If the customer lives longer, then uh, they will obviously pay you a lot more over the course of the entire lifetime compared if they die, like let's say within a year <laughs> of yeah. uh, taking the drug. Yeah, it's it's a you know it's a like you say it's a huge conspiracy area, um, and I've kind of got the benefit of I've actually worked in that world and I've worked outside of that world, so I see it from both angles. Now, commercially, you know, it's obvious a drugs company is never going to invest hundreds of millions into something they can't own, um, but ethically, it's like there's a lot of you know molecules that actually work amazingly and have good safety profiles that are simply not getting the research they deserve that people could be benefiting from now um whilst we're waiting for you know the future and drug development and things like that mm, yeah so um many people think that nad is that miracle molecule that we've been waiting for all our lives that uh, is gonna like drastically extend human lifespan so like how does NAD as an enzyme inside the body relate to longevity and aging before we talk about like the supplements? Mm, yeah, so NAD is known to be a natural molecule. I think that's the first thing to point out. It's not something that we're artificially adding. Um, it's found in every single cell in our body, and it's actually important for hundreds of different reactions. Um, so actually, if you if you, if all the NAD was suddenly taken out of your body, um, you would die within thirty seconds because it's it's so fundamental. There's so many processes, but I guess. To keep it simple, the two things that it's most famous for are energy production and repair. So first of all, NAD is a very important part of the pathway in our mitochondria that converts the food that we eat into the ATP or the energy form that all of our cells need to function. Um, and without NAD, our cells literally could not make energy. So that is how important it is. The other thing it's really important for is repair. So NAD basically acts like a fuel for many of the repair processes in our bodies. So we know that our cells are constantly under attack from all sorts of different things that are trying to damage them. Um, and NAD activates many of the pathways that um, coordinate any repair responses and also drives many of the, the enzymes that are coordinating a lot of this repair. They're, they're, they're basically using the NAD as a fuel. So the reason that it's become so interested in the world of aging research is because NAD is actually found to decline with age. And this has been found in, you know, every sort of species, mammal, human, different tissues. There seems to be this, this decline of NAD as we get older. And obviously that's an issue because if this molecule is helping to produce all that energy, it's helping to coordinate all this repair. When NAD goes down, we've got a major issue because um, our cells don't have the energy they need to function. They're getting a lot of damage that they can't repair. And ultimately what we see is this seems to manifest as a lot of the signs and symptoms of aging that we experience. Yeah, like a lot of the... the you know, the benefits of NAD for this repair function is actually one of the reasons why it goes down with age as well, because the PARPs are the like ma major DNA repair proteins that consume NAD. So the when your body is experiencing DNA damage, even from like sunlight, excess sunlight or sunburn and, you know, sleep deprivation or bad diet or whatever the source is, then your NAD goes down as a way to, you know, counteract that damage or repair some of the damage. And, you know, that's the which is a cycle that the older you get, the lower your NAD becomes because you're experiencing more of this oxidative stress and DNA damage. And the more of this oxidative stress you experience, the more NAD you kind of need. And, you know, it's a kind of vicious downward yeah. uh, spiral. It's a very vicious cycle. And actually, um, what we know is that we actually experience an exponential decline in NAD for this very, very reason, because, you know, its decline is making other things worse, that which is then further accelerating its decline. And we know that the, there's two major reasons why NAD actually declines as we get older. The first is that our NAD production actually goes down. 
So our bodies are actually very, very good at making their own NAD. They have, um, you know, production pathways and NAD recycling pathways uh, called the salvage pathway that essentially makes sure that we can make all our NAD that we need without any external input from the diet, which makes sense because why would we want to rely on this coming from the diet if it's so important? Um, we have to have a fail safe mechanism of making it. But unfortunately, it's not that fail safe as because it's been found that this uh, pathway, this salvage pathway, which makes and recycles NAD, actually declines with age. And the second thing that we know goes wrong is that as we get older, as you've just mentioned, our demand for NAD goes up. So we know that you know, older bodies, we have older cells, they've been around longer, they've accumulated more damage, more oxidative stress, more inflammation, which is requiring huge amounts of NAD to actually coordinate the repair process. So you've got this perfect storm where you're getting older, your body is actually needing more NAD, it's using more NAD, but its capacity to reduce uh, produce NAD has actually gone down. So this is why we see this exponential decline in NAD as we get older. Mm. yeah is it like is it more yeah like because of the damage component that you know if you are alive then you are experiencing damage and the older you get the more damage you tend to experience um or is it yeah like something innate about aging so i guess my question is like does the damage lead to this and do you know if like healthier older people have higher levels of energy for example just because they experience less damage or they age slower or uh, is it yeah, like literally just because of the aging aspect itself? So as with anything in biology, there's never a simple answer. <laughs> you know, it's not fully understood yet what is driving what. So what we know is that NAD seems to be involved in all of the hallmarks of aging. So the hallmarks of aging are 12 things that go wrong at the cellular level to drive the aging process. Um, so, for example, we've got DNA damage, senescent cells, mitochondrial dysfunction. We know that low NAD can actually drive all of these processes. But then it's which came first. Is it those processes causing the damage driving the NAD decline or is it the NAD decline driving the damage, which is then causing those processes? And that's still a key question that is really unanswered in the field. Um, but what we do know is that it is beneficial to boost the NAD because it does seem to be one of the only things that's been found to actually impact in a positive way all of the hallmarks of cellular aging. Mm, gotcha yeah i guess you know there is probably healthier adults like healthier older individuals will still have like higher levels of nad probably is you know kind of kind of cause and effect in some ways that the lower nad then the faster you're going to age and if you age lower then you probably have like some aspects of better like nad maintenance or nad nad better nad recycling or you just experience less damage because of a better lifestyle I would, I would yeah know. absolutely and what we do know is that in accelerated aging disorders so genetic disorders which cause people to prematurely age we know that they actually have much lower levels of NAD and repair. And we know that generally um, un unhealthy individuals also have lower levels of NAD. So for example, um, people who are, are obese have lower levels of NAD. People with metabolic dysfunction have lower levels of NAD. Um, people who have suffered from alcoholism have lower levels of NAD. So generally, again, these are also people that are aging faster. Um, so, so yeah, lower NAD, very bad for cellular health, not good for aging. <laughs> mm, yeah. So, uh, you mentioned a few of them, alcohol and obesity. So what are the things that reduce the NAD levels the most? So lifestyle plays a huge role. So, um, the, when scientific studies have looked at different tissues and measured decline in NAD levels, it's been estimated that your NAD declines by around 50% every 20 years. And that's actually from birth. So like by the time you're 20, then that's already half, then it halves again and halves again. And quite often when I talk about this, rather than just showing a straight line going down, I show a graph that's got a lot of lumps and bumps in it. And that's because NAD decline is actually different in everyone. And this is largely due to lifestyle. 
So the fact is that, you know, we, we've mentioned that actually deplete NAD are, are generally things that are causing any damage to the body, in particular, anything that's causing any DNA damage, because as you mentioned earlier, NAD is very important for driving the DNA repair enzymes, which are, are called the PARPs, and they are using NAD as that process. So naturally, if you have more damage, it, there's more repair and more NAD is going to be used up. So things like excessive um, alcohol, alcohol, uh, smoking, uh, an inflama inflammatory diet, anything in general that is causing excess inflammation to the body, we know drives a huge amount of NAD depletion. So they're sort of the, the bad things. Um, sunburn, as you, as you mentioned, causes a lot of DNA damage in the skin and massive NAD depletion. Um, but then there's also positive things that you can do to actually increase NAD when it comes to lifestyle. And the, the best known things are exercise and fasting. Um, and these are naturally known to increase your NAD levels. And the way that they work um, is basically they put the body or the cells under a period of energy stress. And when our cells detect that there's a, a lack of energy, whether that's you using more energy through through exercise or there's a lack of energy coming in through fasting, what they do is they set off a bit of a stress response by activating a pathway called the AMPK pathway. And what this does is it tells the cell that it better increase energy production because it's low and also switch on repair so that your body can survive the period of stress. And what it does is it switches on the main enzyme that makes and recycles NAD, which is called the NAMPT enzyme. And that basically boosts levels of NAD naturally to help the cell survive the period of stress. So really NAD is this really um, sophisticated method that the body uses to basically sense what's going on in the outside environment and then make an appropriate response to our, you know, our cellular pathways and um, so that the, the cells can react to our external environment. So, mm. you know, exercise and fasting, they're boosting NAD. But unfortunately, with our modern lifestyles, we're not exercising as much as we should be. You know, we're sedentary. We're eating too much. We're told to have three meals a day. Um, that means that AMPK pathway is just not getting activated, which means NAD is, is not getting made as much as it could be in our cells, which obviously also contributes to its decline. Mm. Yeah. And uh, at the same time, we also experience more oxidative stress, like the bad oxidative stress from the environment. Uh, one thing I yeah, like always wonder is like your body recycles the NAD but how or like where does it come from <laughs> like what 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 does it uh, turn into nad you know there's the process of autophagy that breaks down these cell parts you know and pretty much mobilizes creates energy out of those that is reused but with nad if your nad levels are low then what are you actually recycling if there's nothing to like <laughs> recycle if that makes sense yeah well precisely that <laughs> That is a, a major issue because whilst we we do get precursors that come from our diet, so precursors are the building blocks for making NAD, but we know that under normal conditions, um, our body actually just likes to recycle NAD. So what happens is that when NAD is used up during repair processes um, by the PARPs, by the DNA repair enzymes, it gets broken down into its precursor. So every time the NAD is used, it's split apart, broken down into its building blocks. And then these precursor building blocks are then supposed to be scooped back up um, by the salvage pathway and recycled straight back into NAD. So it's actually a, a pretty closed system um, where you, know, you don't actually need any external input coming in. So obviously if you are massively depleting NAD, um, what should happen is when you are young and your salvage pathway is functioning correctly, you should never experience a reduction in NAD because as soon as the NAD is being used up, that pathway is scooping back up the breakdown products and turning it straight back into NAD again. And again, it's it's a really elegant way for the body to make sure you never run out of NAD because as as demand for NAD goes up, so if repair goes up and more NAD is being used, 
more breakdown products occur and then they're just recycled back into fresh NAD. But if repair goes down, there's less breakdown products, there's less demand. So you're not getting as much made. So that's when we're young. And that means that, you know, it should be this self-sustaining cycle. But as we know, when we're getting older, we're not recycling the same amount. And that is the major problem. And that is the thing where a lot of NAD boosting methods just ignore or fail to address. Mm, right. Yeah. So the salvage pathway is like working 24 seven, ideally. Um, but uh, there are like certain situations where the salvage pathway doesn't work. So you can maybe cover those. Yeah. So, you know, first of all, with age, what we see is not only a decline in NAD levels, but if you measured the levels of the recycling enzyme, this NAMPT enzyme in our bodies, we also see an age associated reduction in that. And what we know in experiments in humans have showed us that even if you can boost levels of this enzyme, you can you can significantly increase NAD levels without any external precursor or anything, you know, being put into the body. You're just fixing your body's natural um, NAD production pathway. So we know it declines with age. Um, obviously, that's not ideal. Um, a lot of it is just due to, you know, lack of exercise, wrong diet, things like that, which are just not stimulating that AMPK, AMPK pathway um, to actually boost levels of the salvage pathway. Um, so we know that that is a key reason why NAD is actually declining because of a reduction in NAMPT. What we also see is that there are also various other parts of the NAD network in the cell that also become unregulated because, because of the fact that NAMPT has gone down. So, for example, if you are using up NAD um, for repair or whatever it may be, it's getting broken down into precursors, but your salvage recycling pathway is not working properly these precursors then start to build up in the cell. Um, it, this builds up as nicotinamide. That's the main, well, the only breakdown product. And the cells are then like, oh, like we don't like things building up, so we've got to get rid of it. So then the cells start to change um, and they start to um, express other enzymes that shouldn't be overexpressed in a normal healthy cell. Um, and one of these enzymes is a methylating enzyme called NNMT. Um, so it's a nicotinamide methylating enzyme. And what it does is it sees that there's a big buildup of nicotinamide in the cell because it's not getting recycled back into NAD. And it goes, OK, we need to get rid of this. So it tags a methyl group on and that signals its excretion from the cell. Um, and what that means is, yes, it's dealing with the short term issue that we don't want to build up of nicotinamide in the cell. But actually, it's causing other problems because firstly, the nicotinamide is then not available to be recycled. So you get a reduction in NAD, but also methyl groups are very important for a lot of other cellular processes like epigenetics and DNA repair. So then you're using up all these methyl groups for something that they shouldn't be getting used up for. And you see methyl donor depletion as well in older people. So it's kind of like, you know, not only is recycling gone down, but it's also having these knock-on effects throughout the rest of the cell. Mm, that's interesting, yeah. And uh, like the, just the NAMPT enzyme, if that goes offline or like what are the things that, because I know like, you know, the things like circadian rhythm misalignment and uh, I would imagine like other things can also just block this uh, pathway. So what are some of the other things that can do that? Yeah, absolutely. So what's known is that NAD plays a huge role in making sure our circadian rhythm is aligned. So, and again, it's another beautiful example of how amazing biology is and how the design of it is, is so intricate. Basically what happens is, is during our circadian rhythm, which is the, the 24 hour cycle, sleep wake cycle, you've got you know, tens of thousands of genes that need to be switched on and off during this period. 
And during the day, basically, there is a, a transcription factor or a protein called clock. And what that does is it switches on our daytime genes. So everything that we need for our metabolism, hormones, you know, to, to function throughout the day uh, when we're awake. And one of the genes that this clock um, protein switches on is NAMPT. So that is the enzyme that produces NAD. So during the day, NAMPT, the NAD producing enzyme gets switched on, which makes sense because we need energy through the day. Um, NAD levels go up. And what NAD does is it actually activates something called a family of proteins called the sirtuins. Now, the sirtuins are involved in a lot of different things, but when it comes to circadian rhythm, what they do is then NAD activates the sirtuins, which then produces other factors that go back around to the start and switch clock off. So then clock goes off and the daytime genes go off and the nighttime genes come on. So it's very important that, you know, changes in NAD levels that you see throughout the day, because it's not constant throughout the day, it fluctuates. That fluctuation in NAD is very important for regulating our whole circadian rhythm, which obviously influences our sleep. So what you see in um, people that have very poor sleep um, or, you know, shift workers is that um, their circadian rhythm becomes misaligned. Their NAD is all over the place. Um, and you can see a misalignment of, of a lot of different things that are associated with our circadian rhythm. Also in older people, um, when they have lower NAD levels, that means that influence of NAD on the circadian rhythm is not as strong. So again, this can play havoc with all of those different genes that are supposed to be getting switched on and off. Um, so yeah, that is a, a huge thing where it's, it's vitally important to make sure both of those things are aligned um, so that NAMPT is switched on and NAD is increased. Mm. So uh, how do you, you know, because there's like obviously different ways you could look at the circadian rhythm alignment, um, but what are like maybe the main principles or like how aligned, <laughs> what, was it, what does it mean to be aligned with the circadian rhythm for like the average person? Like, uh, you know, does it mean that they need to stick to a certain uh, bedtime schedule or is there some like, you know, buffer that they can still have? I think a key thing is trying to stick to a more regular routine um, because a lot of these things are like a cyclical. So, you know, you're seeing a rise and a fall and then that's knocking on other things that are rising and falling like the clock protein. Um, so if you are one day, you know, sleeping for three hours, the next day sleeping for 10 hours and one day you're getting up at this time, next time you're getting up at a completely different time, um, then that's going to be a major issue as well, like your exposure to natural daylight. So we know a lot of the um, circadian rhythm is set by your eyes um, and the suprachiasmatic nucleus in your brain being exposed to natural light that then sets off, you know, sets the ball in motion. So I think having good sleep hygiene, you know, making sure that you're getting natural light in the morning um, avoiding, you know, the light, the blue light at the nighttime um, all things for generally good sleep hygiene that will help to keep your circadian rhythm aligned and also your NAD. Mm, gotcha. Uh, are there like any ways to activate the, let's say like your NAMPT is offline because of your you know shift work and uh, just a poor lifestyle. How do you like get to that thing running again? So how do you start to recycle the NAD again? How do you, you know, get the NMPT activated? So lifestyle factors would be exercise and fasting. Um, you know, start to practice those sorts of things. Um, there was a study um, done with exercise, which showed in just three weeks, um, you can turn around your NAMPT levels and actually start to, to increase NAM, NAMPT. And they saw an associated increase um, of NAD. So those would be the, the initial things to start with. And then obviously there's things like supplements um, and natural molecules that can be used to actually activate NA, NAMPT. Hmm. Which uh, ways to like you, what are like, because the, NMN and nicotine riboside, for example, don't work through NAMPT and uh, they like bypass that. So uh, 
what are the what, what's the supplements are specifically for the NAPT then? Yeah, so this was this was one of the big things that I was trying to overcome when designing our supplement, the Cheeto Time Plus. Um, you know, I could see that NAD was something that was really beneficial to cellular health and health span. Um, but a lot of the ways that people were trying to boost it simply weren't addressing the complexity of NAD biology. So the two that you've just mentioned, NR and NMN, they are precursors for NAD. So they are literally just the building blocks that our body uses uh, to make the, the bigger NAD molecule. And the idea behind those is that if you take more of the raw material, um, then hopefully our cells will take it and use it and convert it into NAD. But what we now know is the reasons NAD declines is because those pathways and enzymes that actually convert uh, these raw material precursors into NAD decline with age. So you can take as much precursor as you want, but if you're not fixing the salvage pathway, then you're not going to be efficiently using any NAD that is actually produced. So one of the, you know, a lot of the studies even on these compounds um, show that even by boosting NAD this way, it could be actually causing further issues. So for example, um, if you take NR or NMN, but you don't fix the salvage pathway, any NAD that is created is used, it's broken down into nicotinamide, and then that nicotinamide sits there and the body's like, oh, we need to get rid of it. So it increases the methylating enzyme. So the nicotinamide becomes methylated and excreted. And this is why a lot of people that are taking NR or NMN are told, oh, you better take trimethylglycine as well to um, make sure you don't become methyl depleted. So again, it's like, they're very classic examples of where it's an approach that back in the day, we thought, yeah, that's a good idea. But now we know a bit more about the biology. We're like, actually, they aren't addressing the root causes of NAD decline. And if you really want to fix NAD depletion, then what you need to do is switch back on the enzyme. So when we were de designing our product, uh, we put multiple different ingredients in there that were activating the NAMPT enzyme, um, either directly or indirectly by activating AMPK. Uh, we also put inhibitors in there of the methylating enzyme, because again, this becomes chronically overexpressed. Um, there's no need for it to be overexpressed in our cells if the salvage pathway is working optimally. Um, and by inhibiting the methylation process, it means that any nicotinamide that is broken down um, can be actually recycled rather than excreted. Um, and I guess the other thing that we haven't even spoke about yet is inflammation. Mm. So inflammation is a huge cause of NAD decline. And that's because chronic low-grade inflammation as we get older actually causes increased expression of a, an inflammatory protein called CD38, um, which is a huge consumer of NAD. So for every one cycle of its reaction, it uses a hundred molecules of NAD. So it is massively draining. Um, and studies have shown that if you can inhibit CD38, that you can actually boost NAD massively just by doing that one thing alone. So as well as switching on the NAMPT enzyme and inhibiting the methylation, we also have ingredients in there that are actually designed to inhibit CD38. So it's basically looking at everything that's going wrong and in, in addressing the root causes of NAD decline rather than a simple precursor, which completely ignores the salvage pathway, it ignores the methylation issue, it ignores inflammation. And also a really key thing I think that doesn't get discussed enough is if you are not inhibiting CD38 and you are taking NR or NMN, it is very likely that any boost of NAD that you do get is actually going to be driving inflammation. Because what we know is that CD38 has a much higher affinity for NAD than any of the other beneficial processes. And basically what that means is that if NAD is available in the cell, that CD38 will grab it before the repair enzymes or the sirtuins or anything like that even get a look in. Wow. So you could be thinking you're doing a good thing, trying to boost your NAD with a precursor, but really it could be driving inflammation. 
And again, there is evidence in a lot of the human studies to show that this is the case and this is actually what is happening. Mm, so it's like you're you're feeding the fan of the flame of the inflammation <laughs> with yeah. uh, just having like too much N NAD around without addressing the root cause of the inflammation. So you need to first put down the inflammation uh, before you actually start raising the NAD. Exactly that. Like if there's one thing you're going to do, just <laughs> make sure that when you do have some NAD, that it is going to somewhere that's beneficial because we know CD38 is chronically overexpressed with age um, and in you know multiple different um, age-associated diseases. And you do not want to be feeding CD38 because it's pro-inflammatory. Um, so yeah, and there's a lot, a lot more research coming out on this, um, especially with its link to senescence. Um, we know that senescence seems to drive CD38, which then depletes NAD. And then it's a vicious cycle because then you end up with more senescent cells because NAD is not available to repair damage. Um, so again, it just shows, you know, NAD, although it's this one single molecule, there's actually a lot of things going on in the cell that have to be considered um, in order for NAD to be working, you know, at optimal levels and also appropriately. Hmm. Gotcha. So, so what are the compounds that help with the uh, CD38 and uh, the NAMPT? Like uh, other like, so are there like something that they could get from food or do they need to like, people need to supplement these? Yeah, so a lot of the molecules that we use in our product are natural molecules. As I mentioned, I'm a huge fan <laughs> um, of natural molecules. Um, so the ones that we have in there are quercetin. Um, so this is derived from rutin, um, which actually is an activator of NAMPT. We also have alpha lipoic acid in there. And what that does is it actually activates AMPK, which, as we discussed earlier, is a, is a key driver um, to switch on the NA, NAMPT pathway in the cell. When it comes to inflammation, um, we've actually got parsley powder in our product. And everyone goes, why on earth have you got parsley powder in there? Well, the reason is it contains high amounts of a compound called apigenin. And studies have shown that apigenin, when it can inhibit CD38 and boost NAD levels. And with a lot of molecules, especially natural molecules, often it's better to give them to the body in a more natural form, like in a whole food form, rather than um, an isolated compound. So although, you know, apigenin has been extracted and isolated, it's actually its absorption is much better when it's put in um, as a whole food. And that's the same for quercetin. So you can take quercetin by itself, or you can take it as rutin, which is a, a, a quercetin glycoside. So it's kind of got a sugar attached to it, which protects it through the gut um, and aids absorption. Um, we also have in there the inhibitor for um, NNMT. So that's the methylating enzyme. Um, and that compound is actually derived from green tea and it's a compound called EGCG, mm. which is something I always rave on about because when I worked in drug development, the amount of times EGCG came up top um, above a lot of drugs um, was quite incredible. So it's a very, very um, interesting compound. But in our product, it's specifically in there um, to inhibit the methylation um, process. Mm. Right. Uh, so this is like a lot of these polyphenol rich foods and herbs and spices tend to have these uh, compounds that, you know, they do help with uh, many things, but uh, like NAD recycling as well then. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's no surprise that, you know, a lot of things that we're doing in our lifestyle are working, you know, that are beneficial are actually now being found to be working by increasing NAD. So, you know, we've known forever that exercise and fasting is good for us. And it now seems that a huge part of the, the process that's, you know, causing the beneficial effects is the elevated NAD. You know, when it comes to a lot of the, the plants uh, molecules and, um, you know, nutrient derived polyphenols, et cetera, again, we're seeing that a lot of those seem to be working on pathways that are altering NAD levels. So, um, so yeah, it's unsurprising that a lot of things that are healthy for us are actually activating NAD because again, NAD is in every cell. So if you can boost it, it has 
whole body benefits. It's not just a very isolated part of your biology. It is literally a fundamental part of your whole body. Mm. Right. Um, I guess I wanted to ask about the other precursors as well. So like besides the salvage pathway, like what are the direct ways to feed into the production of NAD with the other pathways? Yeah, so there are a couple of other pathways. We've got a pathway that uses the amino acid tryptophan, the de novo pathway. But when it comes to normal NAD synthesis, this plays a, a very, very small role um, and is not considered to be a, you know, a very efficient way of producing NAD. It's almost like a last resort. And um, we've also got the press handler pathway. Um, and again, that is using um, B vitamin derived molecules. So you've got your nicotinamide, your nicotinic acid, your um, nicotinic uh, nicotinamide riboside, your NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide, all of those sorts of dietary derived um, are all uh, can be used by the press handler pathway as well. But again, what has been demonstrated is that although they can be used to produce NAD, the salvage pathway is the body's main way of making NAD. So it will pick that pathway over any of the others. But it's unsurprising that we do have backup pathways because again, NAD is so important that our body does not want to have, you know, wants to have a redundancy there. It wants to make sure there are other ways that it can get this vital molecule. Mm, yeah, like it's, you can only like do so much with the tryptophan and uh, niacin because you know whatever energy you make even from the tryptophan and niacin then all of that energy will still go into the salvage pathway <laughs> so if the salvage pathway doesn't work then you still you know you would need to end up boosting the like the primary pathways or the like baseline pathways first but even then like you or any of the salvage pathway is the one that you know enables you to keep recycling it eventually yeah. And also, you know, just talking about precursors, there's always so much argument of like, for my diet, which precursor is best? You know, is it nicotinamide? Is it NR? Is it NMN? And, you know, when when you view it in light of everything we've discussed today, which precursor is actually irrelevant? <laughs> it's what's happening to the precursor once it's in there. Yeah. But another thing that, that many people don't realize is that, um, a lot of the, the precursors actually can't get into the cells. So cells are very controlled. Um, they don't just let anything pass in and out. And some molecules can freely diffuse across a cell membrane from a, from a high to low concentration. Um, the only precursor that can do that is actually nicotinamide. So then again, it's, it's not surprising that nicotinamide is also the preferred precursor for the salvage pathway. NR and NMN both require what we call transport proteins or little channels um, to actually let them into the cells. So again, that's another hurdle that precursors have to get over um, to actually get into the cell because NAD doesn't do a great deal outside of the cells it actually does all its work inside of the cells because that's where the DNA is to be repaired. That is where all the cellular um, organelles and functions go on that, that need NAD. Um, it's where the mitochondria are, which rely on NAD. So, you know, it's, a lot of people will also argue that, oh, but what happens if I have an IV? And it's like, well, yeah, an NAD IV is going to get the NAD into your blood, but then it's got to get into the cell because it it has its main functions inside of the cell. Mm. Gotcha. What's the difference between nicotinamide, niacin, and niacinamide? So th those are, you know, very similar, but uh, they have like some key differences. Yeah, and it's so confusing, and it's a naming thing. So um, so niacin is actually an umbrella term for all the different B vitamins. So niacin itself is not really a thing. Um, niacin is the term given to nicotinic acid, niacinamide, and nicotinamide. And where the confusion is, is that people see niacin and think, well, that's, you know, that means that if something's labeled as niacin, then it's going to have this have a niacin flush. So that's where a lot of people have heard of niacin. You're going to get this flushing sensation. But actually, 
the flushing sensation is only caused by a version of niacin, which is nicotinic acid. And that is structurally different to nicotinamide, which has a totally different effect in the body um, and does not cause a flush. And then it's even more complicated because nicotinamide is sometimes referred to as niacinamide, but they are the same thing. So the main thing to remember is that niacin is just a name. It's not a thing. And the actual molecules are either nicotinic acid or nicotinamide, and they're very different. Even though on the backs of supplement bottles, you will see them all labeled as niacin. It will say niacin, then in brackets, as nicotinic acid, or niacin, then in brackets, as nicotinamide. So for example, in our product, we use nicotinamide because it doesn't create a flush. And actually, that is the main precursor for NAD, not nicotinic acid, not niacin, nicotinamide. <laughs> mm, right. Yeah. Thanks for the clarification. I guess the nicotinic acid has also been used for or you know it has the um like usually they use it for like cholesterol and the lipid improvements yeah. but does does the nicotinamide also have any of that or is just the nad side so that is a very clear example of how they're different so nicotinic acid niacin as nicotinic nicotinic acid lowers cholesterol niacin as niacinamide or nicotinamide doesn't have that effect and that's because they're structurally different mm. um so no so nad has been shown to have effects on cardiovascular health uh cholesterol things like that itself but the actual molecule you can't take nicotinamide um for its lipid lowering effects that has to be nicotinic acid mm. gotcha and uh does the niacin usually is also associated with some insulin resistance if it's used uh you know, long period. So does that apply to nicotinic acid or uh, nicotinamide? So that is more nicotinic acid. So again, it's it's a it's a really annoying way that someone must have once thought up that it was a good idea to label it in this way. But in reality, in the field, it causes so much frustration because people just assume that any form of niacin causes the same issue or causes the same problem, but they, they have very different physiological effects in the body. And um, so it's always important to check like what form of niacin you're using. And the, the main reason why it's labeled that way is the argument is that it ends up down similar pathways in the body. So um, even with tryptophan, you'll often see it has niacin equivalent written next to it just because tryptophan ends up down some of the same pathways that the B vitamins end up down. Um, so it was a way of trying to make sure that people weren't taking too many different molecules that would ultimately end up down the same pathway in the body. Mm, gotcha. Yeah, that's <laughs> very, yeah, like for the layman, it can be very confusing, the, especially so confusing. So, so similar names. And yeah. niacinamide then is just the form of nicotinic acid or it's it's niacinamide is just nicotinic acid so and now i'm getting coffees <laughs> there's nicotinic acid which is completely different to nicotinamide but yeah. nicotinamide is the same thing as niacinamide it's okay. just people use those two names <laughs> interchangeably yeah that's that's very crazy um is there anything else that is kind of important to cover in relation to the salvage pathway or just overall nad like are there any other bottlenecks or any other things that mess up the system i think the ma the major things we've discussed you know as with anything that's new in science the science always changes you know i think we'll probably be on here in a couple of years maybe doing another episode where it's like right what do we know now because there's so much research into nad and um, i think for me the most exciting thing is is that the more evidence that comes out about NAD, the more we see how it seems to be this molecule that's almost like sitting at the center of lots of the hallmarks of aging um, and seems to, you know, cause a lot of um, crosstalk between them. And, and what we know when it comes to cellular aging is that it's not one thing that's causing it. There's many different things going on. And NAD seems to be this sort of messenger molecule that's kind of 
coordinating a lot of it um, in a in a good or bad way, depending on its levels. So I think um, in the future, that's where the exciting research um, is, is going to be. Uh, but I think for the meantime, you know, my advice to people would be that any NAD boosting is a good thing, but you need to be thinking about what method you're using to boost NAD and is it actually addressing the root causes? Because if it's not, then you could be inadvertently making inflammation and methylation worse. Mm. Um, so yeah, that would that would be my takeaway message. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I guess last is a more theoretical question would be that, you know, how you know, how would you how would you, how do you see in the future like does the NAD boosters or like whatever, like just an NAD metabolism, how uh, big of an impact it would have on like human lifespan or is it only like a health span supplement that it slows down the age rated decline or do you think it has any like like more longevity and increased lifespan effects or is it just yeah, like a health span supplement or a molecule I, itself? I think it's going to be more of a, a health span thing. Mm. Um, I think naturally, if you improve health span, you you know you're also going to impact lifespan. Mm. Um, but what I think is that'll be interesting in the future is using combinations of different you know targeting different cellular issues. So I think the sort of next things that we're going to be talking about a lot more um, and are going to have an even greater impact will be, you know, using NAD boosters in combination with senolytics. Uh, so these are molecules that are designed to remove senescent cells, uh, which cause inflammation and cause all sorts of other issues and are also a hallmark of aging. Um, so I think that, you know, the future and where we may start seeing some much bigger impacts is where we look at you know, putting lots of different pieces of the puzzle together, so to speak, um, and using NAD in combination with other therapies that are, you know, a bit more um, still in the theoretical and research phase, um, but will soon be translated into, you know, human therapies, whether that be supplements or drugs or whatever that may be. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Like, I don't think that, you know, raising NAD levels or taking certain NAD boosters would like make you live over 120 or something like that. But yeah, like it does certainly have a huge role in just overall function and the other age related conditions. And like you said, it's the at the center of all the hallmarks of aging as well. So, you know, whatever target you're going to have for anti-aging or longevity, then, you know, NAD is part of that. And you do need to like address it at least in some some degree. Yeah, it's a it's a very good place to start. And I think the exciting thing that that's always drawn me to NAD and why we wanted to develop an NAD product is that it's something that you can manipulate with a supplement. You know, we've done a clinical trial to prove that it does actually boost NAD, activates the sirtuins, reduces inflammation, reverses biological age. You know, we've tested it and proved it works. And isn't that amazing that something as simple as a supplement can have such an impact? Um, and I think, you know, senescence is probably going to be a bit more complicated. You know, removing cells out of our body is not as simple. But knowing that we can have such great, a great impact on our cellular health by something as simple as, you know, the lifestyle we've spoke about or a supplement, um, it's not a great ask for people. Um, and it could actually really impact their, their future health. Mm, yeah. So where can people get the uh no cheat or time and uh, where can people learn more about you and your work as well yeah so if they want to look, learn more about the supplement they can go to our website which is nichido.com n-u-c-h-i-d-o.com and um, on there we've got all our clinical trial results and um, a lot more information about the ingredients and you know how the product works and um, they can find us on on instagram you can find me on instagram i obviously love NAD but my background as a scientist I talk about everything to do with um with with the science of aging um, and my handle is just at Dr Nicola Conlon sounds good we're gonna put the links in the show notes and uh, it was great talking with you <laughs> I guess we're gonna wait for those future discoveries and trials on NAD and uh, we can have <laughs> have another like amazing follow-up on this Absolutely. Yeah, I'll hold you to that. <laughs> All right. I'll see you around. Thank you.
But do you want to slow down aging and live longer? If yes, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details.